Welcome to our Insight Lab on driving differentiation by utilizing structured data in feeds. Today, we're going to talk about how we utilize structured data to drive the best possible consumer experience in digital media. We know that data privacy is top of mind, and two of our Insight Lab presenters, Christine and Julia, will be addressing that directly in their Insight Lab. But today, we want to talk about data that you can tap into that either you own or third party owns that isn't impacted by data privacy, but can still be utilized to drive that positive consumer experience. My name is Adam Riddell, and I oversee our structured data and feeds team. And I'm JQ, Senior Director of Paid Search. In our industry, automation has been truly brought to the masses. Um, in most of the platforms that we utilize across Google, Facebook, Bing, there's some sort, there's a lot of like easy buttons that are available to all of us to activate campaigns. Uh, looking at Google specifically, we actually have uh, data on this. We can see since 2016, the number of ad betas that Google has launched that are focused on automation have risen 125%. However, non-automation focused betas have actually decreased almost 30% in that same time frame. Ultimately, what this means is that automation is driving some laziness in the space because we've got these easy buttons in front of us and, and it's really tempting to use those when we're activating campaigns. And ultimately with automation, it makes it really easy to launch uh, pretty decent campaigns. Like they, they will get the job done, but ultimately it has made it even more difficult to be great in the space and differentiate your brand from the competitors. There are just so many data signals out there that can be captured and pulled into a data feed. And this is why tapping into structured data as the foundation of automation is what's going to allow brands to be able to really drive home that positive consumer experience. So today we're going to talk about a few things. What are those structured data and feeds? What do we mean by that? Why are they important and challenging to tap into? What is it that we at our prospect are doing to really overcome those challenges? And then lastly, give you some key items and elements to take away so you can immediately start leveraging structured data and feeds in more nuanced and strategic ways. So first things first, let's define structured data and feeds. We've all seen this logo on a slide somewhere. We know it means something technical, but it's a little vague. So structured data and feeds, they are just a collection of data. Uh, it can be almost any type of data, but here are some specific examples. Data about your products and services, such as the price or availability. Uh, performance data of your media or of your website. Uh, customer data. So data about what they're buying. It can also be third party data such as weather signals or search demand or just fashion trends in general. But ultimately, all of this data has to have useful associations. So we've all seen a feed. They're not pretty, but these rows and columns are those associations that allow us to then pipe that data and use it in other systems across uh, a lot of different channels, search, social display email, even SEO is the OG of structured data and feeds because it's that structured HTML code that allows search engines to read the website and present those results. And just to be really specific here, like structured data is being used to power a lot of ads in these channels. So this uh, display banner is all of the elements of it are being powered from a feed, the price, the the brand name, the image, the call to action are all being pulled directly from a feed to power this ad. So when it comes to feeds, we want to do a little bit of fun myth busting. Um, the term feeds gets thrown around a lot in the industry. So we're talking about those data files that Jake just mentioned, not things like the Facebook or other social programs news feed. We also sometimes hear that, well, feeds are only used to power shopping campaigns. Well, Yes, feeds are used for shopping campaigns, but that's not necessarily true. It's like Jake said, feeds are being utilized across every channel. We also hear things like feeds are only used with Google or uh, even where feeds are only available if you work on in retail. And that's just not true. Feeds are present in every vertical and every channel in the digital ecosystem. When you think about airlines, flights, rates, when you think about hotels and their listings and uh, addresses and phone numbers. 
or uh, automotives and nearby locations, uh, any of that, anything that can be organized into a product or service can be included in a feed. And these are what power both the ads and the campaign uh, programs that manage these, these verticals in their media. And what we're seeing is that feeds are actually playing a massive role in the industry and are continuing to evolve. So back in the early 2000s, Google rolled out Frugal. Some of you may have heard of this program, uh, but Frugal was the one of the original uh, feed-based advertising units. And over time, we've seen those types of ad units in the industry expand to use feeds in more and more ways. So some of the advancements that we've seen are entire tech platforms that have been built that are solely powered by structured data and feeds like iActivate and Sidecar. And then we've seen a massive expansion across social and display with the introduction of dynamic product ads in both of those channels. And then entirely new ad formats are also being built like showcase shopping and shoppable images that are solely powered by a feed. And ultimately what we're seeing is that so many different channels within the space are all relying on these data signals now that are coming from structured data and feeds. So what's the challenge though? If the industry is headed there and we're all moving in this direction, like why are we not already all doing this? Well, in our experience with structured data and feeds, there are three main challenges that are pretty big obstacles to overcome here. Uh, number one is just knowing what data signals are even relevant to your business that could improve your campaigns is actually pretty challenging to figure out. Secondly, once you know what those data signals are that can make an improvement to your campaigns, actually getting access to them can be really difficult. Third party data, sometimes very difficult to get your hands on. Even first party data, when you own it, sometimes it's really challenging to get kind of real time access to it. And then lastly, once you've even got your hands on the data, connecting it into these systems like Google and Facebook and Bing is also really challenging because each of those has a different a different technical integration. Ultimately, what we're trying to do by overcoming these challenges is to reduce wasted media spend and make our ads more relevant. We all know that some of our media dollars are being wasted. You can find stats on the internet like this one that say that 40% of media spend is being wasted. It might be higher or lower for your brand, but we do know that we're wasting media. And in our experience, overcoming these challenges is how we're going to help reduce that spend. So how do we solve for these three challenges with structured data and feeds? So Jake and I have built these three elements that align to each of these challenges to help provide a takeaway for you and your brands to help solve for how can we tap into structured data in more nuanced ways. And it starts with people and understanding your data. Uh, understanding what data do you have available to you, understanding what data is impactful or statistically significant that's out in the industry. Maybe that's owned by a third party uh, or maybe that's something that a, a stakeholder within your own company has access to. But being able to perform a data audit to understand what data sets and what signals out there are relevant to my brand and my campaigns is the first step in being able to tap into structured data. The second piece is identifying a technology platform that allows you to tap into those data sources and access that data. Uh, so maybe that's a platform that's able to uh, connect to your own internal data systems uh, to pull in relevant data or something that's flexible enough to be able to go tap into third party data sources and ingest those into a single data environment that then you can use to line up with your active media. And that brings us to the third piece. Once you've identified the data and once you've identified a platform to pull that data in, connecting that data to your active media programs and with the team that's managing your media and establishing that process is the last piece. Understanding a testing strategy that you can leverage to utilize that data in your active media and understand how it drives performance improvements and what the impact is, is the final piece in really driving that positive consumer experience. The way iProspect has approached this is by building a Feed Connect team and platform. iProspect actually has its own dedicated structured data and feeds team filled with individuals who understand our clients' data. They live and breathe their data feeds. They're in their data feeds on a daily basis. They understand what data is available for their media programs that the feeds are built on, but also they're doing those audits that I just spoke about and identifying other third-party sources or first-party data sets that we can add to what we're using to even further enhance that. 
And those teams are constantly looking to test and apply a new data sets and new strategies as well. The second piece is our Feed Connect platform. We've actually built a proprietary customized feed platform that allows us to connect to any data source, whether it's an API to your product data, your business data, your performance data, uh, as well as tap into any kind of data set or um, database that a third party might have that would allow us to pull in relevant data as well. And then the last piece is our Feeds Connect and Structured Data and Feeds team sit hand in hand with our media channel teams. For example, my team sits with Jake's uh, search team to understand what data is available within our system that we've pulled in and how does that connect into both the campaign platforms and the actual media programs that we're working with to power those ads and how can the data be utilized in new and strategic ways, which we're going to talk about in a moment, some of those unique ways that we've been able to tap into different data sets. This is actually something that we're already doing. Uh, our Speed Connect system is connected to all of our channel teams, from search and shopping to social to SEO, like Jake mentioned before, display and affiliates. Uh, they're already we're already using our data sources uh, and our Feed Connect platform to power both the media within these programs that are feed based, but also the campaign strategies and using data signals in new and improved ways to create a better consumer experience. So next, we just wanted to jump into some specific examples of how we're using structured data to reduce that wasted media spend and make our, our media more relevant. So one of our clients uh, has auto repair shops all across the country, and ultimately they challenged us to stop wasting media spend on customers that were too far away from their stores. If you have a brick and mortar footprint, you know that customers are only willing to travel so far to get to your store, depending on what vertical you're in. Um, but more specifically, where your store is located uh, has a huge impact on how far people are willing to go. Dense urban area, people won't travel quite as far. Sprawling suburbs, they'll go quite a few more miles to get to your location. Uh, but ultimately, we wanted to figure out on a buy store basis, uh, what is that max radius that people are willing to travel? And so ultimately, in the using the kind of feed connect process, we started with a data signal audit to see what data does the client have that can help us figure this out. Uh, and working with them, we were able to uncover that by utilizing the their store locations as well as the home address that they captured from their consumers and their CRM database, they actually calculated for us the average distance that consumers were traveling to get to each of their stores. And then we used that, that information to build an entirely new uh, data feed that was the optimal radius for each store that we could use then across their media channels. And when we uh, activated this within their media channels, we saw some pretty incredible results. So naturally, uh, cost per acquisition went down, conversion rates went up because we stopped spending money on people that were searching but were too far away from the stores for it to be relevant uh, to them. And ultimately, this reallocation of media dollars drove a lot more calls for them. Another example that we wanted to walk through that also spanned multiple channels was with a retail apparel client. This retail apparel client we've been working with for a long time, and we've done a lot of work to optimize both the programs as well as the campaign management using best-in-class bid strategies, using uh, taking advantage of new alphas and betas, and optimizing the feed in all the known ways that we have. So when we approached this uh, this client with a, this challenge of how can we further tap into structured data. Similar to what Jake mentioned on the last study, we started with a data audit and that started with understanding well, what other data is there available to us that we could tap into. And in this particular case, we had a whole slew of various images that we could look at for any given product to determine what did we want to show. And after some testing and doing some alternate image testing, we actually found out that um, using the Feed Connect platform, we were able to adjust which images we showed. And for uh, women's products, we found that when we used an on-model image, that those products actually performed much stronger in media. Whereas for men's products, when we used a flat lay image, such as uh, a product just laid out on a bare background, 
those actually performed much stronger in media. So what we were able to do was by looking at the feed itself and determining um, which image to use for which specific product through our Feed Connect platform, we were able to drive an increase in performance and, and um, engagement by utilizing different images for different product sets. Next, we wanted to talk about how we're using structured data and feeds to tackle some really specific like paid search challenges that uh, we all struggle with in these channels. Um, firstly, if you've run a paid search campaign, you know that search query management is crucial to efficiency of the program, but it's also a really tedious task. And that's caused by the fact that 15% of all the searches that happen on Google are net new, meaning Google has never seen that search before. And we see this when we're doing uh, pulling search query reports, the number of ways that people can search for your products or services uh, varies greatly and it's you see new queries all the time. The other challenge that we see is that it's really difficult to have real time accuracy of your ads and your keywords when your products and services are changing over time. As those change, you've got thousands of keywords and ads to go update as well. Both of these are really manual tasks, but they're critical to having a successful paid search campaign. So what we wanted to do was figure out how can we use structured data and feeds to automate these two portions of paid search. Uh, specifically, we had a couple of clients that these were really big challenges for them because of the nature of their business. Within real estate, uh, when you've got so many different properties across the nation, that results in tons of unique search queries for each of those. Additionally, in retail, when you've got thousands of different product SKUs, um, it, it makes both of these challenges grow exponentially. However, we used Feed Connect to start with a data signal audit to see what data do we actually need in order to automate these two processes within paid search. And both of these uh, clients have really healthy feeds. However, we did have to augment those with additional data in order to meet our needs here. So for example, in real estate, we get a feed of all of their properties, but we augmented it with point of interest data as well as neighborhood data, because that's really critical to how people search in this vertical. Ultimately, once we had the data feeds in the Feed Connect system and those were updating on an intraday basis, we then used additional technology, um, iActivate and Sidecar, to automate these uh, the search query process as well as real-time updates to keywords and ad copy so that these campaigns are now fully automated and there are no humans having to actually upload um, changes to these accounts. And ultimately, that drove a ton of efficiency for both of these brands. Um, we can see that overall it drove a big increase in leads and revenue. However, on top of the performance improvements, there was also a huge time savings here. And the, the team is now able to spend that time focused on strategy and innovation instead of manual tedious work. So we've talked through a couple of examples of where we've used structured data and Feed Connect to really drive uh, a better customer experience. Uh, we want to talk about a the uh, we want to talk about what the future of using data signals in more unique ways to better drive that consumer experience home could look like. And one such thing we've talked about is data signals that are relevant to a consumer about any given product or service. We've defined this as as creating a product to audience affinity, meaning how likely is a given audience segment likely to purchase a specific product. So the way that we approach this in today's ecosystem is anytime that an audience segment is present uh, for a given product, we're going to increase our bid investment to reach that consumer. But what we see as an opportunity is getting additional data signals to pull in around that affinity for a audience to a specific product to be much more granular and strategic in our investment decisions. For example, looking at the Pixel 1 versus the Pixel 4 Google phones that have just that has just come out. When we look at the early adopter audience, we know that that audience is going to respond to uh, the new Pixel 4 uh, and be much more engaged with that product versus something that's been out for a long time. 
So before, where we would just bid up because the early adopter was present across the entire product catalog, by understanding that data signal within the feed and applying that into the feed through a Feed Connect like platform, we would be able to make an investment decision specifically in that early adopter more strategic way by bidding them up even further for that Pixel 4 while bidding them down for that individual Pixel 1 product and doing this across each audience segment and each product when there's statistically significant data to do so will allow us to be much more strategic and granular in making smarter uh, investment decisions and, and getting the right product in front of the right audience. So what have we covered off on? Firstly, automation is everywhere now, and that automation is powered by structured data, but that is where uh, brands can gain a competitive advantage. So, but it's not easy to do. Um, otherwise, everyone would already be utilizing structured data to its, its fullest capabilities, but ultimately it's tough to know what data is actually useful to my business, how do I get my hands on it, and then how do I connect it into these other platforms? Um, but with a smart approach, as we've seen through a lot of these examples, uh, we can overcome those challenges. And ultimately, that's what's going to make your media more relevant and um, reduce that wasted media spend. So in terms of takeaways, next steps, what can you do today? If you're sitting on piles of data and you just don't really know uh, what uh, what data could be used to improve the performance of your of your media then start with a data signal audit the second step is to identify a platform like the feed connect platform we talked about earlier that can allow you to tap into those data sets that jake talked about organize them into a single location that can then apply them to campaigns and active media and then lastly um once you've got the data and you've got it uh in, in a place where you can connect it, then activating on it is going to be what drives that improvement in relevance. Um, piping it into those other platforms is going to reduce that wasted media spend. Thank you for joining our Insight Lab. This concludes our coverage of driving differentiation by utilizing structured data and feeds.